Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock and this is Captain's Vlog. So, uh, we've had to replace an essential piece of equipment on board motor yacht where AWOL here on the bridge, the um, gyro compass. Now, the what, what a gyro compass essentially is, is a gyrosphere which spins at a very high rate through an electrical current and then uses the Earth's uh, gravity and the rotation of the Earth in order to find true north. Now we use this on board uh, Motio AWOL, or most ships actually use it for navigation and for the vessel's satellites. So it is a key bit of equipment because it's connected to our autopilot, it's connected to our radars, to our ectus, to additional equipment and our satellites on board. Uh, motor your AWOL. Unfortunately these bits of kit do cost a lot of money. The one we are installing is costing us uh, 3, 000, no, sorry, 13,500 euro plus an additional 1,500 euro installation fee. So I'm going to take you into a part of the vessel which I haven't done yet I don't think on this channel so it's a whole new area you guys haven't seen under the helm here. I'm going to show you the, the gyro the guys are installing now. The main unit is in they just need to finish the wiring and the other bit of equipment that we're going to be changing is the uh, Inmar Sat C which is this plays this which is this piece of equipment here which is used for which is used for, sorry, um, communica communications, which is used for communications across the globe. Now, unfortunately, this system is starting to fail like the gyro, they are over 10 years old. It's quite common, you know, and in order for us to stay more importantly safe, you know, we want to make sure all the equipment is up to date, running efficiently, and to make sure that we are complying with uh, code as well. So, Let's go and take a look underneath here so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So, as you can see, we've got a lot of electrical equipment here, wiring. We've got this, the backboard for the breaker board for the bridge equipment here. Uh, you can see all the different wiring and the connections for all the, the electrical components that we have. This black box behind here, this is the air conditioning fan coil. So basically, uh, as you can imagine with all these electronics, it gets very warm in here. So we've installed, well, the shipyard installed an air conditioning unit so all the systems remain cool, especially in those really hot summer months. Here you can see we've got one, uh, I know you can see where we have two um, UPSs, which is uninterrupt uninterrupted power sources. Uh, we have additional batteries outside as well for the um, for the GMDSS equipment. And we have additional power um, from the emergency generator for the for the Ectus. See, we can in here we store a bit, few bits and bolts. We've got our day shapes. So if we get um, not under command or a towing in over 200 meters, we have the day shapes. We have another door on the starboard side of the bridge, which gives us direct access to the ship's flares and the line throwers as well, which are propelled by by rockets. This unit um, here is the board for the radar. And then we've got the other unit there for the secondary radar. Here we have the unit, next is emergency torch or flashlight for the Transas. Now Transas is Ectus, which is electronic chart display information uh, system. And then we have in here things like the, the boards for the echo sounder, the weather stations, the, G, the GPS uh, receivers, autopilot steering, all that essential bit of, of kit that you'll find on any ship's bridge. Now, the reason we're here is for this black box here. This is a Simrad gyro, and you can see the most important thing is that it is wheel marked. What does that mean? It means it complies with the maritime regulations for a commercial vessel. So you can't just go and buy any bit of equipment all our bridge equipment is all wheel marked, okay? 
And basically what it means, okay, it's a bit of a difference, but it basically means it's four times the price, really. There are a few differences, but the cost of these things is just ridiculous to, you know, a standard, um, you know, to a to, to standard unit. But, you know, because of the code and because of our regulations, all the equipment that we install must be wheel marked. So inside here is basically a gyrosphere which is spinning around through an electrical current and is giving us, as I mentioned before, um, true north. And then from there, it works out our directions through our gyro compass. So it then sends a signal. Let me come up back up here. It sends a signal. Put my glasses on. Take the dust, dust sheet off. So it sends a signal to here. Again, it is off. Uh, this is the the you know this is the display the gyro compass, and if it does fail, then we always have the backup uh, magnetic compass here, which in fact um, it's been two years now since we've done what's called our uh, compass swing. So when AOR gets launched back into the water uh, in the coming weeks, we'll have to do a compass swing with a what's called a compass adjuster. So that person will come on board. Where they'll tell us certain directions, we'll do a compass swing, and they'll correct what's called our deviation card, and um, which we have to do every every two years. So normally it is an essential bit of a kit if it does fail, because again, like I said, this is connected to the autopilot. We can actually switch over to the um, electromagnetic compass uh, as a precaution, but um, if it you know, again, if it does fail, it is a key piece of equipment. So you'll be very careful. If you are at sea, you must immediately, we must immediately inform Flag State, we must inform our management company, and we must inform the harbour master into the port that we that we are going into. So it's it's really, really important that you do maintain, or we maintain the equipment on board, uh, because what we don't want to do is go out code because then essentially the vessel is illegal. But again, if it does fail, you inform flag, you inform class, you inform management the harbour master, you, you then apply for, for a dispensation. And what that will do, that will allow you to legally go into a safe haven or you know, to the closest ports where you can safely dock. And there you can tie alongside or tie, you know, tie it to your dock. And then from there, they'll say, right, you have to fix it before uh, proceeding to sea, to sea again. Now, going back under here, what else I wanted to show you, which is quite important, is you can see they haven't finished the wiring yet. Not to worry, all the breakers are off for this. So even though the cables are loose there, they will be, um, all the breakers are off and we have to put special signs um, next to the breakers to make sure no one turns them off. So we completely block it out so it can't accidentally be turned on. So you can see how complicated it is to build this thing. Look at all the wiring and cabling. It's pretty, uh, it's quite impressive stuff. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take you to the starboard side over here. So you can see under there as well. Um, so what's really important, you'll see here is the signage. We've got a P1 extinguisher. That basically means it's powder. For the P stands for powder and the one stands for the weight. So it's one kilo. We have our low line throwing apparatus. We have life jackets and we have our flares. So let's see if that equipment is in there. So again, you can see we've got our life jackets, as per the signs, we've got our life throwers and we've got our flares. And then as it says, the one kilo powder extinguisher, which we recently just had serviced all the extinguishers on board. If you haven't seen that video, actually, I'll put a link just here so you can go and check it out after this video. That black box over here is the secondary ECTIS computer. So with ECTIS, you must have a dual system in order to be ECTIS compliant. Again, ECTIS stands for Electronic Chart Display Information System and can be used as a primary source of navigation. What does that mean? That means is that if you've got the correct um, you know, official electronic charts, there and you're cruising in areas which you know comply with those electronic charts you don't need to carry paper charts on board legally now it's always advised to carry paper charts on board now the benefit of using electronic chart display information system rather than using paper charts 
is that we get what's called the weekly notices to mariners. So these are updates to the charts. With the electronic system, those weekly updates take five, maximum 10 minutes. It's a really easy system to use once you get used to it. If you're using paper charts and your vessel, you know, co covers, you know, a, a long range, then it can take a few hours every week just to update your charts. And you must update your charts. It is a legal requirement. If your charts are not up to date and you get a port state control, then you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be in a bit of trouble. So anyway, going back under here, you can see we just got the extra ink and stuff for the printers. We got the secondary um, fan coil for the air conditioning. Now you can see this one's coming directly onto all the electronics, keeping everything cool in those um, in those really hot summer months. Uh, in this blue bag is where we keep all the splints. So if anybody was to, um, you know, break a leg or injure themselves or break a bone and need a splint, that's where we keep them um, under there. So hope it gives you guys a bit more of an insight of the type of electronics. I do apologise. There is a bit of a mess in the bridge, but you know we've got all the guys working doing installing the gyro. Um, we've also got the painters outside as well. So normally it's, it is a bit tired in this, as you guys have seen. Um, but if you give you guys a bit of an insight of really, you know, the amount of work that we have to do in order just to comply with things, you know, just to comply with code, with flag, with, with classification society. Um, so let me know if you guys work on a boat or anything like that. You know, let me know what equipment you guys are, are carrying on board. I'd be interested to know. And I really do hope you guys enjoy that video. A bit more of a insight into, into what we do here on board Motor Your AWOL. As always guys, it really does help if you just click that thumbs up button. And uh, if you wanna see any future videos, you don't wanna miss them, do consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification. Anyway, that's all for today's video chaps. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next video.